Hi, are you sick of completing the square and misfactoring so badly? Well, if that's the case, then you're going to be happy because we're going right back to factoring. What we're going to do is learn a new way to figure out what the vertex is, and that does involve a lot of factoring. So, what you were supposed to do before you came to the video was go on to Desmos and complete the first page and the first two questions here. Then you play the video. So if you have not completed the first page and questions one and two on the next page, could you please do that now on Desmos and then you can come back and press play on the video. Thanks. Okay, so let's check your answers to the Desmos work. Here is question number one. You had to graph the x-intercepts using, well, graph the parabola using Desmos determine the x-intercepts and the vertex on Desmos and plot those onto the graph on here. You can check to see if your work was right. And you can check for the second one. And you can check it for the third one. And lastly you can check it for the fourth one. So hopefully you noticed a bit of a pattern between the zeros and the x-coordinate of the vertex. So if you see here the zeros are 0 and 4, the vertex x-coordinate is at 2. Here the zeros at 1 and 3, the x-coordinate of the vertex is 2. So hopefully what you noticed was that the x-coordinate of the vertex is halfway between the zeros, which is the average. The reason for this is because the graph is symmetrical. So wherever that axis of symmetry is, the vertex lies on the axis of symmetry and the zeros are equal distance away from that axis of symmetry, making the x-coordinate of the vertex the in-between point, or the average. Once you know the x-coordinate of the vertex, you can simply substitute it into the equation to get the y-coordinate of the vertex. So let me show you, uh, let's just summarize this first and then I'll show you an example. So to find the vertex by averaging the zeros, what you do is you take the zeros and you add them together and divide by 2. And that will give you the x coordinate. So s and t are the zeros. Then to get the y-coordinate, you substitute the x-coordinate into the equation. So that's all it is. It tends to be a little bit faster than completing the square, but you have to either have your question in factored form or you have to um, be good at factoring to get it into factored form. So we'll start with an easy question. This would be a knowledge question. The equation is already in factored form. So hopefully you remember to get your zeros. What you have to do is take each factor, set it equal to zero, and solve for x. So add 2 to both sides. So one of the zeros is at 2. For the second factor, subtract 4 from both sides. And the other zero is at negative 4. Notice that these are separate points, so you do not put cord, uh, brackets around it. So one zero is at 2. One zero is at negative 4. So to determine the x-coordinate of the vertex, you have to average the zeros, which means you have to take the two zeros, add them together, and divide by 2. 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is at negative 1, which means that's where your axis of symmetry would be. You don't have to graph the axis of symmetry if you don't want to, but it might provide a good visual and it might help you. To determine the y-coordinate, we're going to take the x-coordinate 
and we're going to substitute it into the equation. So that's going to be 1 half times negative 1 minus 2 times negative 1 plus 4. So that's half times negative 3 times positive 3. So that's half of negative 9, which is negative 4.5. So that means your vertex would be at negative 1, 4.5, which we're going to graph negative 1, 4.5, oops, sorry, negative 4.5. which is right about there. And then you can graph your parabola. Notice how you're just using these three points just to sketch the parabola. We're not even using the step pattern to get any more general idea of it. And just pretend that that went through that point. And there you go. So graph using the zeros in the vertex is your last step. Last step. So if your equation is in factored form, you pick out the two zeros. Once you have the two zeros, you average them to get the x-coordinate of the vertex. Once you have that, you substitute it into the equation to get the y-coordinate of the vertex. Let's try another example. Oh, no, you're going to try it. So pause the video, try example two, and then come back to the video, press play, and see if you got the right answer. So please press pause now and you only have to do question two. Question three we'll do together again. Okay, now press pause. Okay, now you can check your answer to number two. Zeros were at negative five, negative one. When you average them together, you get negative three for the x-coordinate of the vertex. When you substitute it into the equation, you get negative eight for the y-coordinate of the vertex. That means your vertex is at negative three, negative eight. Now, you could get a question like number three where it has not already been factored. So what you have to do is decide on the type of factoring that has. Well, since they can both be divided by negative three and they both have an x, that is a common factor. So we are going to common factor out a negative three x. And when you divide them both by negative three x, you get x minus 4. Now we need to figure out the zeros. So that's set each factor equal to 0. And solve. This one you divide both sides by 3. This one, you subtract 4 from both sides. So now to find the vertex, for the x-coordinate, we're going to average the two zeros. And for the y-coordinate, you're going to take the x-coordinate of the vertex and substitute it into either this quest equation or this equation. It doesn't matter because they're the same equations. And solve for y. So that makes the vertex at negative 2, negative 36. So you will get some questions that you have to factor first and then get the zeros. So that's what you're going to try now, number 4. And number 5. And then we'll be done for the day. So press pause now and try number 4 and 5. Right now, press pause please. Afterwards, come back and check your videos. Okay, welcome back. Here's your answers to question four. It first had a common factor of two, which you should take out. 
Then it was a simple trinomial. There's your two zeros. Average them to get the x-coordinate. Substitute in to get the y-coordinate. There's your vertex. For question number five, if you look, it was a tricky trinomial. So going through the tricky trinomial steps, you found out that your vertex was at 7 over 2 and 1 over 4. It may be ugly to work with fractions, but you at least have the fraction button on your calculator. So when you average them, add them up, divide by 2, you get 15 over 8. Substitute that into the x-coordinate of the equation, and your y value was 451.24. And there's your vertex. So I hope you enjoyed this. It's not an overly challenging concept, but you really have to be able to factor to be able to do this. So if there's anything as usual that you didn't understand, make sure you mark it down and ask your teacher in class the next day. Bye-bye.